Okay, right, it's time to have a little fight with Dust Studio, I think. I've made a model, and I'm going to try and get it out of Dust Studio. So I'm going to click on the icon shelf here on Bryce for Dust Studio, rather than launch Dust Studio, and then try and send to Bryce, because the last time I tried that, it just crashed. So this is how Dust Studio launches for me. I may have changed some of the settings from its default state, and I'm not really sure how you would take it back. So uh, let's, let's see. We can get rid of this figure just by selecting it and deleting. And then the next challenge, particularly for me, is to find the content that I've uh, downloaded. I used the Install Manager. I found it in the store, clicked on it, went into the Install Manager. As per usual, the Install Manager insisted on doing an update, which then crashed. But it seemed to get over that and work. I've I found that the it's the the program for the for installing stuff into Dust Studio does tend to be pretty robust, even if it insists on updating every time. But okay, finding my stuff is always a bit tricky. Uh, now I've got rid of the figure, it means that the smart content's not trying to tell me other things that relate to the figure. So I think if I go into products, um, uh, try default. Okay, yeah, it's popped in there straight away. So this is uh, this is good. This is the thing that I've made. And uh, oh, Cthulhu, he's good. Right. Um, let's double click on that. Oh, and it seems that I've got another layer of selectable things. So um, let's let's try beach hut base. So it's loaded in and it's coming with some materials on it. I thought I might have to apply those. So let's see what I've got. I'm, I'm not very familiar with how to move in and out. It always seems to all go the wrong way for me, uh, the zoom. So how do I get a roof? I'll double click on this again and see if I can find a roof. Uh, oh, there's a roof. See, I've totally not tried this. This is the first time I've tried this. I'm just muddling through to see what it's going to be like. Right, let's see. Have I got some interior items that are already textured? Oh, this is great. Yeah. And so I'll have my sink. Uh, it's not appeared. Slipped up somewhere there. Try again. Okay, that didn't work, and I don't know why it didn't work unless it's appeared somewhere else in the scene. Where I've got oh, that's materials, right? So I need to bring in the sink as a prop, and then if I go down here and click on the materials, well, it I think I've got to select it, and it's it's now inside the the chalet. Hmm. Okay. Right. Now things. I'm going to try and open these doors because I do remember that I, I rigged them with Jack Tomlin's help. So let's let's get into the base. And I think one of this is the east door. So let's open a door. Yep. Okay. Let's do the other door. Da da. Right. Now I've got the doors open. I can select the uh, unit there. Go back to the smart content, which is now. Um, Oh, materials yeah okay and click on that double click on that and it's it's colored in right okay let's uh, let's put a nameplate on here now is that some material so I need to find I need to find the the disk itself that's the nameplate presumably it's in here somewhere I wonder if I can oh yeah right and I'll put this one to one side a bit so I can fit more things on so uh, where's the nameplate itself Ah, here it is. So double click on that and it's put it in, in the colour I wanted anyway. That's a bonus. Let's have uh, a bench and make it um, just a brown colour. Oh, now I need to select it. Oh, no, it's gone back to that now. Let's try again. So that's selected. Double click on that and it's coloured it in. And I want my shelf up as well. So double click on the shelf. And then there should be a shelf colour in here. Yep. Okay, I think I'm getting the hang of this. Oh, I've gone back to that for some reason and double click on the shelf so don't take my use of this software is any way indicative of how you should use this software because I really struggle with Dust Studio the the rigging uh, was done with uh, Jack Tomlin's help in Poser which I found equally baffling and needed quite a lot of help with and the textures by Forbidden Whispers and uh, I wouldn't really know how to go about that. The, my biggest challenge when making this model was UV mapping it. And uh, eventually I bit the bullet and got to UV layout because Wings 3D's UV mapping capabilities were proving at about at their limit, I think. Well, or at least my ability to use those UV mapping capabilities. So 
I, uh, I got another solution right so let us see now and this is where you got to cross your fingers so I'm going to try and send this to Bryce as it is so we go file send to Bryce and we'll see whether it uh, it comes across or whether we get a crash oh I seem to have sent the shelves across on their own is that it mm. okay again doubt in my lack of understanding of the way these things work oh, I've got the shelves selected so maybe if I select the other things I can send them to Bryce bit by bit let's see if this is working oh yeah something's happening okay we've got the shelves and the the outside we're getting there right and now we'll go back to that studio what else we got oh we can send these benches over so file send to Bryce uh, the roof file send to Bryce this um, number so send that to Bryce and my uh, shelf units um, worked up units I should say I've done the shelves on top right let's go file send to Bryce let us see if we managed to get everything over there right, and now we'll see what's happened to the materials and it looks a bit dark in there I suspect that means that the the material for glass that uh, exists in here this this glass material is not it's not um, apparently transparent in Bryce so even though it's got transparency set the bridge has not recognized it how to uh, process that correctly so what you could do is just uh, stick in an appropriate glass material um, but bear in mind that when you put in a glass material it's expecting a solid so it depends how the geometries come across whether it's come across as a, a 2d thing so we're going to find that out now or a, a solid so let's go to um, I want glass don't I let's uh, try a standard glass it'll be in here somewhere there we go a specular that's probably not an appropriate choice but let's have a look okay so it's let some light through that's the thing but as it as the refraction correct for our model that's the other question we need to answer here it doesn't look bad does it I mean it looks okay I'd just be uh, a bit suspicious that the the refraction level on on this surface might be wrong but as a, as a, as a simple solution it went in quite well we've got glass in this door it's just the angle it's not showing up very well can't see inside much so let us try and just upgrade the lighting a bit that seems to be ambient there too or is it reflective let's have a look at the material on this nameplate see what we've got ah reflection and ambient but no blobbing ambient and it was ambient black so you can see that okay the geometry has gone across and it looks like the textures have made it across in one piece the interpretation of what is curved and what is flat is pretty good in Bryce um, so so but if, if it isn't if it's not working right if it's saying something that's looking curved that should be flat remember like for this concrete base I'll show you you've got the edit option here and you can select the angle at which it uh, interprets between a flat surface and a curved surface so doing that you can see it's improved the appearance of that base now because Bryce has gathered a bit more intelligence from the geometry about what shape it should be in fact let's do that for a few other things to see how it turns out I'm going to create slightly better lighting for this I'm just going to use the Bryce sky to do it I need to get rid of the Sun I'm just going to do this quickly there are other tutorials that show you how to set the lighting up so let's do rendering scene and use sky to create a quick HDRI image turn cast shadows off increase the intensity of this a bit so we've got some light coming through and then turn the sunlight back on so we get some light inside this object as well it's not a particularly uh, high quality lighting I've chosen to do I just want to be able to have a look at the side here and uh, and look at some of the geometry see how it looks so these pillars on the corner I'll edit those in the same way I drop it down to 43 degrees and uh, reinterpret the smoothing angles on it and it should see sort out some of the geometry here so we get some sharp edges as well I'm just looking at that it's probably a shadow let's have a look at this side so the um, this internal wall 
we can do the whole base I think maybe I'll, I'll see whether Bryce is going to tolerate this I don't think the, uh, the the memory footprint of this model is particularly high but it takes a while for it to get through all these passes and I don't think I should have clicked on the check mark just then oh no it's done it check check right so that's uh, that's squared the sides up a bit and sorted out any issues with how it interprets the the geometry there so I would say that's uh, that's pretty successful even though we've not got to a point where we can produce a, a fantastic render we've, we've sorted out a few of the material problems and uh, it's it's quite easy to uh, for example you see this shading edge here where what's happening is that um, Bryce is interpreting this as a curved surface so if we, if we take the roof and just edit it probably I should have set the angle there a little bit lower then hopefully it will pick that out and uh, and flatten it I, I probably shouldn't have selected the main roof area there because this uh, corrugated roof does actually quite have quite a lot of uh, polygons uh, in it uh, to to create the the wavy effect so I'll just have to be patient and and hope I don't manage to crash it. Okay, it's tolerated that. So Bryce is being well behaved. No, the angle wasn't low enough there. So if I select those components without the corrugated roof, it'll process a lot quicker. Drop this angle down to below 45. That's what I usually do when doing this process. Click on that, and then you can see this surface here as now being interpreted by Bryce as a flat surface instead of a curved surface so it loses that little bit of weird uh, shading angle on there. I can see that the roof material let's have a look at the roof material is missing its bump response or sufficient bump response to register in Bryce so we've got ooh, all these materials I don't really got into that but that I can see that there's something in the alpha channel that could be a bump map so let's set this up to a higher level see if we can get some kind of response out of it well it's obviously this is quite uh, quite a subtle bump let's see if that's improved the appearance of that no, it's not so subtle there so I'm going to I'm going to go back into the material and drop it to around the 20 mark well, that's, that's a bit better I'm getting some bump effect on there but it's not outrageous I'm going to take it up a little bit more so I'll take it up to 50 and okay let's see let's have a look at these um, the pillars so let's look at the materials on these pillars I think it's the same situation here we get we've got uh, a bit of a randomization thanks to the uh, the DS bridge so that's given that a bit of a more of a coarser texture let's do the base as well I think this thing was going to see very similar pattern across a lot of these I don't know why it's got specular output there again another and whoops so I've slipped up there uh, control Z hopefully it'll restore it right I need to select things in individually if I select something with um, multiple selections then Bryce will interpret that that I want the all the materials set to the one that was deemed selected first so just got to watch out for that control Z is your friend here you can usually go back without causing any issues so I've just added a bit more oh, that's turned out well bump to the texture on the ground and uh, obviously if you were going to convert this model fully you'd must patiently go through and uh, do all those things let's see if we can get a render out of this then just so I've got something to put on the thumbnail for the video so document setup a one-to-one -one aspect ratio narrow the field of view and let's have a, a side shot like so okay right if I lower this down so I'm approximately at, at, at eye level uh, so okay the sky's not really very uh, exciting with it being the, the standard bright sky and if I was just going to um, do this in isolation I think what I would do is atmosphere off set it to fully white then go back into the sky lab regenerate the sky from the atmosphere uh, we've got sunlight disabled but what I'm going to do is I'm going to use uh, True Ambience. So go Render Options, Premium Effects, True Ambience. Set this down so I can preview it. Scatter Correction. I won't select Boost Light. No, I don't think so. Maximum Ray Depth of 4. So let's just give this a quick render. Okay. Right, I'll take the 
plane here and set this to white like so then I'm going to change the uh, the output of this up a bit more see what the result is if it's too bright it'll start to affect the color palette and you can see things now look very gray so if it's affecting the colors you can correct for that with boost light but then you might get quite a lot of noise in your render you see the color saturations come up now so we don't and because we've used boost light we don't necessarily need such a high output so I just want to get it to the point where uh, the the ground is being bleached out so you can't see the ground it's a bit of an effect there and then we've only got shadows being cast in the in this foreground area my, my glass in there which is uh, just reflecting some of the background there I suppose the ray depth is going to interfere with that because it's got to travel through all these layers of glass so I'll take the ray depth back up okay so we've got a bit of light getting into there but not a lot and uh, I'll see how things look if I turn the option of this up so let's try it at uh, 64 probably gonna have to render it at maximum to get a decent output but I just want to see what it's looking like a little bit bleached out in terms of the color because of the high intensity of this so I'm going to drop that down to 30 still can't see the horizon there if you can it's very subtle so there you go it's sort of floating in the void though there should be a little bit of a hint of a shadow around the base I know what I can do here I can reduce this back to where you can see the horizon then go atmosphere I can and use haze but I'm gonna have to do it not with the atmosphere off but with a custom sky so alt turn the clouds off then increase I could do it I'll do it in here so I want a high density but low thickness so that haze doesn't inter interfere um, to too, too much with the object when I've turned the thickness up. Oops, as so you can see at the point it was starting to come into the object there. Then I can have a bit of a sort of a foreground shadow but with the background completely lost and then the colours won't be burned out so much by having the high intensity and I should be able to achieve quite uh, a nice quality in the render but without any obvious predominant light source. So it's just given as a, a general render of this object so let's set the render options up to 256 and then be appropriately horrified by how long it's going to take to render so that's going to take 30 minutes to render out at this resolution so what I shall do is I shall let that render and use that as my preview image for this uh, short somewhat scatterbrained video but what I wanted to show was bearing in mind I had not even attempted to load this in using the process that it, you sort of can figure it out it's not that bad it's not that difficult and although I struggle with the Dust Studio interface you can see that it's been robust enough to do this operation without too much uh, trauma I'm pulling out of the hair so there you go that's the end of the video hope you found that interesting and uh, you'll you'll have a go with this cheers now